A bubble chart is basically a scatter plot that you can create with the ggplot and geompoint functions, but with one extra dimension included in the chart. It allows you to visualize an additional variable or column from your dataset. So instead of only showing the GDP per capita on the x-axis and the life expectancy on the y-axis, you can add the population size of these various countries as well. This also comes in handy when you plot cities on a map. Alternatively to only showing where a city is located, you can include the information about the number of residents by increasing the size of the points accordingly. Thanks for watching another one of my videos. In the next minutes I want to show you how to make use of the various scale size functions. I will show you the code to produce the map of the US cities. And then I will quickly explain how to make your bubble chart interactive to gain hover over functionalities by revisiting the Gapminder dataset. And lastly, we will cover how to turn the chart into an animation with GG Animate that you can save as a GIF. Let's get started with the R code. As always, you can use the question mark or help function to get more information about these different scaling functions. The help will give you a description, the usage and an explanation of the various function arguments. To show some of them, I create an example data frame called DF size with X values repeating from 1 to 5, Y values going up from 1 to 25 and then a range of size values going from 0 to 24. So this is what it looks like. And if you just plot the x and y values with the geompoint function, you get the following picture. And within geompoint, you could actually change the size for all of these dots. So if you set it to 6, it increases, but that's not what we want. We want to map it to a third variable, the z size column. If you simply change the 6 to the column name, z size, this won't work because you have to do it within the aesthetics mapping function. Either in the ggplot function or within geompoint, there's also the option to perform mapping. And then the result is that now the points increase based on the information of the third column. What you might notice is that the biggest point is the size of 6 and the smallest point is at the size of 1. And that's the default range that R chooses when mapping a continuous variable to the size. Now, if you want to change that, there are various possibilities. For example, you can use the scale size identity function, and then the size will be identical to the value from the third column. So zero is just a point without an area, but 24 is now four times as big as six before. And the size six can now be found at the seventh point in our data set, which is this one. If you use scale size identity you have to be careful that your numbers aren't actually too big otherwise they would cover the whole plot and then you might have to use the alpha value to see overlapping points. Within these scale size functions you can change the range for example from 1 to 10 means that the biggest point will have 10 the smallest one and all the others are proportional in between. The same works for the scale size continuous function. When you use the scale size area function instead of range it wants to know the maximum size so if you set this to 20 that's what your biggest point will look like and the scale size area function can be useful to investigate your data set before you perform modeling for example in the miles per gallon data set you can plot the type of car the class versus cylinders and then with geom count count how many times your cars fall into certain crossings of these categories and then use scale size to visualize the ends so for modeling here i would exclude five and seven cylinders probably the two-seater cars because they only have eight cylinders and then focus on cars where you have big enough sample size to come to meaningful conclusions. I want to briefly mention the scale size bin function. We will use it for the mapping of the US cities later. But what it does is it creates bins between certain sizes and then groups the data points accordingly. So here I plotted the mileage against the weight of the car and the displacement or size of the engine is visualized by the size of the point, which means you will get in between values with increasing engines. But if you change that to bin, then you see that now there's only five different circle sizes available. So all of these cars with below 100 will get grouped into this size. If you do use the scale size bin function, you will get some nice breaks for separation by default. But if you set the nice breaks argument to false, it will create these bins based on the whole range of values with equally spaced proportions. Another way to influence these breakpoints is to use n breaks. And if you set this to four, you get four break lines, but you can also increase this to eight, and then you will have nine distinct circle sizes with eight breakpoints. You can also manually specify the breakpoints with the breaks function argument and then hand over a vector with the break values you want to see. 
If you want a size to represent a categorical variable, like in the iris dataset, the three different types of species, you will get by default one, two, and three for these different categories. But if you want to change that, you can use the scale size manual function and choose two, one, and five for your species. And now the differences are clearer because now Virginica is five times as big as Versicolor. It's time for some examples. If you load the US map package, you will get the city pop data frame that shows the most populated cities in each state based on the 2010 census. And each city comes with longitude and latitude coordinates, as well as the state and the actual population. And it's 51 rows because it includes the District of Columbia with Washington DC. Because the plot US map function is very unique in the way it produces this map of the United States, you cannot simply use longitude or latitude coordinates, but you first have to transform them, which is easily done with the US map transform function. And now you can add to this map geom point and geom label. This transformed cities data frame now has some additional columns called long1 and lat1 that match the coordinates of the states created by the plot US map function. And when we map the size to the city population, we get these points. And with the geom label repel function that comes from the GG repel package, you can add the label, which comes from the most popular city column, which holds the name of the city. Next, I want to improve upon this chart a bit because I came along a cities JSON file that holds more than 51 cities, namely the top 1000 cities of the United States by longitude, latitude, population, city and state again. We have to perform the transformation again and turn the data frame into a tibble. And then you can add geom points where an alpha value of 0.3 helps you to see where multiple cities overlap, turning gray area into black spots. You see New York with a bigger circle. And by using the scale size area function with a max size of 10, we increase the circles of the bigger cities and decrease the circles of the smaller cities. I then labeled some cities. You can do this by filtering the data set for cities that are above 500,000 in population, which leaves 34 cities. And you can label this in the subtitle function argument of the labs function. I choose size 2.5 for fonts. And in the aesthetics mapping, you have to use the XY coordinates again, and then use the city column for label. And if you would export this as a PDF, it actually looks kind of pretty already with more higher resolution, but we can improve it even further. So what can we do first? We filter again for half a million in population and store it in a new data frame called top 34. Then I plot the US map again with a light blue background as filling. I add the geom points and the geom label with a certain size and also some alpha value. And you see that the geom label repel moves text away from cities, but connects them with these lines. Then I use the scale size continuous function to increase the range before it was from one to six in size. Now it's from one to 12, making the differences a bit more obvious. And then you can use the comma format from the scales library to turn these numbers into proper numbers with comma separation between the thousands and with breaks you can specify exactly what sizes you want to have in the legends so this is 5 million to 1 million and 600,000 and with theme legend position right and the labs function you can again label your chart a bit better so these are the top 34 United States cities. Next, I want to show you how I made use of the scale size bin function. So instead of having the different population sizes all represented by different sizes, I wanted to create some bins. So now you have only five distinct circle sizes with all of the 34 cities grouped in one of the buckets. You definitely want to use the scales comma function again to turn these numbers into this, which is much easier to grasp. I do not suggest to turn nice breaks into falls because then you would get these very odd numbers. So keep it as true. But what you can also do is give your own breaks. So instead of having two, four, six, and eight as cut points, you can choose half a million, one million, two million, and five. And this then also changes the size of the circles. Then you add geom label again and some formatting for the text and subtitles. I move the legend over to the right. And then you have this pretty map now grouping the 34 different cities into four distinct circle categories. Instead of only having the population in these bins with different circle sizes, I wanted to add some colors to them. And in order to do that, you have to include the population column in the aesthetics mapping of geom point so that it knows to expect something to map the color onto. 
If you run the code until here, you would get this result. It would now include a gradient for population that's based on the continuous increase of the population size with bigger cities also getting brighter. But you can also again bin the population into certain buckets with the scale color bin function where you give the exact same breaks and limits as you did before, which leads to color coding in these five distinct colors that come from the Viridis package. And now because these legends are identical in breaks and limits, you can actually merge them with the guides function where you use guide legend for color and size. And now you have one summary legend that includes size and color information. Time to create some interactive bubble chart. When you load the Gapminder package, you have a Gapminder dataset that includes countries with continent information, with the life expectancy and GDP per capita for a given year, and you also have the population. Here I only filter for the most recent data of the year 2007, and then we can get rid of the year column with select minus. If you plot this, putting the GDP per capita on the x-axis and the life expectancy on the y-axis, you can map the population to the size and the continent to the color with Asia in green, Europe in blue, and Africa in red. For GeoPoint, you should choose an alpha to better visualize overlapping data. First thing I want to do is to use the scale size function to make differences between country populations more clear, going up all the way to 24 in size. So this would be China and India. And then with label scales comma, you get nice numbers. An even better label would be to use the unit format function where you can scale it back by dividing by 1 million and then choose the unit character M in combination. So now you have 1 billion here, 250 million there. And within this function, you can also use the name argument to give the legend a title. Other things we can fix quickly. For example, I don't like all this empty space over here, which comes from the not normally distributed gross domestic product per capita. But when you use the scale x log 10 function, you can turn this into a logarithmic scale with $300 increasing by 10 to 3000, increasing by 10 to 30,000. And then you can use the scales dollar function to get this nice formatting of GDP. And with the labs function, you can change the title of the X, Y axis, give it a title, a subtitle, and then some caption. Now you might wonder what this Asian country is that clusters more with African countries when it comes to life expectancy. And for this, I now want to introduce interactive tool with hover over functionalities. All you have to do for this is load the Plotly library and then save your plot in any kind of object. I call it i1 for interactive one. And then you use the ggplotly function on this object to store it and then you call it to get an interactive chart. But now when you hover over a certain country, you don't get the country name because it wasn't mapped in the creation of the plot anywhere. All we did was using the GDP and life expectancy for X and Y axis. We used the population for size and the continent for color. So the actual country name is still absent. And there are two ways how you can fix it. For example, within ggplot, you already assign the country column to label, and then you will see when you hover over a circle that the country information is included and this country down below here is Afghanistan and this is India, China and on top for life expectancy is Japan. You can also use the text variable for mapping but now you see when you hover over that before India it doesn't say country colon but just gives some text and this text assignment we will use for some even prettier information display. But before we do that I want to actually split the different continents because all these circles were overlapping a bit too much. And now I exclude Oceania because it only has Australia and New Zealand included here. And four continents can be better displayed in a two by two matrix. What you would have to add is the facet wrap function in which you use tilde continent. You could also specify that the number of columns should be two, but it usually finds a good presentation even without these details. And then what you can also do is set the scales free. So now Europe is pretty lumped up here with high life expectancy and GDP. But if you free the scales now, each continent will use all of the space to display the different countries. But now the axes mean different things. So the life expectancy is in a smaller range for Africa and in a higher one for Asia 
and Europe. And also the GDP now covers different ranges, going all the way up to 50,000 in Europe and in Africa only including 300 to $10,000. And now that the continent information is included in the facet wrap box, you don't need the legend anymore. So you can get rid of this legend by using theme legend position equals none. Now, when you hover over country, like this big circle here for China, you see that the GDP per capita is around $5,000, but shows four decimal digits and the population is really, so let's fix it. In order to do this, I create a new column in the data called text, where I paste together information from various columns, like the country column, the population, the GDP, and the life expectancy. I use the paste zero function and I merge a character string with the value that comes from country. Then I include a line break and follow it up by population column space, adding the rounded number of the population divided by 1 million. And then I add this text showing that it's supposed to be a million. I add another line break for the GDP per capita and I use the scales dollar function with an accuracy to round to $5. It's a nice tool where you can make the dollar amounts prettier. And then I follow up with the life expectancy rounded to one decimal. So this text vector would look like this, country, Zimbabwe, line break, population 12.3 million, GDP per capita $470, life expectancy 43.5. And now I got rid of facet wrap because I only focus on America, so country from North and South America. And now I include the text column as the text aesthetics mapping. What that gives you is doubling of information. So now you see all the columns we assigned in aesthetics mapping, GDP, life expectancy, population, continent, and then followed by the text we created with country, line break, population, etc because by default, if you don't specify in the ggplotly function what you want to show, it shows everything that's assigned. It will use all of the information mapped to the plot. If you don't want that, then you can explicitly say to only use the text column. So if you use this, you get this nice summary of the different countries. Canada has a higher life expectancy than the US, but a smaller GDP per capita. Here's Trinidad and Tobago, Bolivia, Haiti with the lowest life expectancy, Brazil, high population of 190 million, Mexico, in between here. And in one of my last videos, I got a comment asking about how you can turn this interactive chart into something useful that you can share, like an HTML page or some image. And I found the HTML widgets package that has the save widget function. And there you just hand over your interactive plotly chart, specify that it's self-contained and save it as an HTML file. And then you can open this HTML file in the browser of your choice and have all the interactive capabilities. You can share it with colleagues or friends. So thanks for the comment. It helped me to learn some something new and share it with others. And that's pretty cool. Lastly, I want to show you how to animate the Gapminder dataset. For this, you have to load the GD Animate package. And if you want to save it as a GIF, it's recommended to use the GIF ski library. So now we only exclude the Oceania continent again, but include all the different years. And we can use the country colors that come along the Gapminder dataset to assign different colors to the countries within each continent. The rest is pretty much the same. But what we have to do now for an animation is to add the transition time function to this static plot. And we we want the point to transition from one year to another and within the title we will include the frame time. So the time will go through different years from the 1960s to 2007 and each state will then be displayed in the title and you need this curly brackets for that and then we increase the font size of the title and make it bold to see it more easily. Then you can type in anim and it will start rendering and once it's done it's encoding to a gif and you see the years increasing, most countries getting richer and living longer, and you also see the size of the population increase, and you see the general trend of moving to the top and to the right. And then you can also use the animate function to store the animation object in a GIF by using a certain rendering format, height and width, and the number of frames you want to have. So again, thank you for watching another one of my videos. I hope you learned a lot about bubble charts, how to make them interactive, animate them, and the different options to choose and influence the size and colors of your geom points. Until next time, here at the Data Digest.